Recently, CA has been really generous in giving out units discounts. Not only do we have the High Elf discounts and the Empire discounts, the Bretonians, their peasants, also received a discount. And in this battle, Mr. Teufel here will be showcasing a Bretonian foot army after that price reduction, employing a full front line of foot squires, Goat Chevron. And at the back, we have more spearmen at arms, just peasants all over the place, flanked by men at arms with pole arms, a slightly better version with armor piercing and in the middle a bunch of peasant bowmen with pox arrows providing that fire support especially sniping out say light armored targets like Bellacor. Now at the back here we have a couple mobility very standard for Bretonians, Knights of the Realm and for leading the army we have King Luan Lian Ker, but not on Biki. Yes, he is going on foot here with his amazing drip, the Bretonian colors and whatnot. He will be leading the army from the front, and the king will be supported by a damsel of beast. She is coming in with the staple manticore summon and a curse of Onra air, possibly for debuffing enemy infantry and let the peasants fight more effectively. Now for the opponent here, an army of warriors of chaos led by Bellicor. In the front line we have some standard marauders mixed in with some marauders with hell scourges. At the back we have more slanage units with their meta mobility. Hell striders who are now increased in price but still a strong cavalry overall. Supporting them we have a couple marauder horsemen, the regular variant. And then we have some substantial monster presence here. Double dragon ogre Shagoth, when we count in Bellacore as well, the chaos today are rocking some powerful single entity core. Two very different approaches on the opposing side. One leaning heavy on the numbers game with the peasant spams, and the other trying to use their single entity monsters to do all the heavy lifting. Now without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Honestly, after all the gold chevron buffs, the foot squires are still quite pathetic in stats with only 34 melee attack and 31 melee defense at almost 1000 gold cost. But still, theoretically, they should still trump those chaos marauders. And in the skies right now, Bellacor is being showered by arrows, so the chaos player will flood over some hell striders and the double dragon over Shagoth, hoping to shut down the Bretonian firepower, and also a nice pit of shades here hitting the peasant bowman. Unable to dodge in time, this entire unit of peasant bows are gone, probably shattered even from a single pit of shades. Overcast, while over here Balakor dropping in, trying to route off the peasant bows, but the counter charge from the Knights of the Realm will be pinning him down, doing some nice impact damage with all the anti-large, while in the front over here, some of the infantry has already clashing into the Hell Striders who try to pull back but the foot squad has managed to catch them a bit. Debuffed by the Sword of Corone, all these units here will be taking noticeable damage, especially the rather fragile Hell Striders who are now pinned in by the Knights of the Realm as well. Their heavy armor and anti-large will be very effective against these glass cannon-like cavalry. In the skies, there is also a summon of Manticore from the Damsel of Beast, dropping in, hoping to chip away some health on Bellacor using that charge impact. Especially with Bellacor not having too much armor value, the Manticore's non armor piercing damage would be very effective against him. Now back to the front line, the foot squires are dominating the infantry fights, as they are quite expensive now with all the chevrons added to them. Initially, the rate of losses are quite similar on both sides, but as the battle drags on, the heavy armor on the foot squires are really showing their advantage. Now, arguably, the Hell's Gurge Marauders have better combat stats, but most of their weapon damage is mitigated by the foot squires' armor, while they themselves, despite having that physical resistance, it is not quite comparable. And the bonus versus infantry of the foot squires will give them an extra edge to overcome the Hell's Gurge melee defense. As you can see here, all these foot squires have successfully routed all these marauders and they will be pushing. While in the middle, Dragon Ogre Shagoths are smashing peasants left, right, and center. Being surrounded by spears and beast slayers of Baston, an elite foot squire that I totally forgot to catch in the army build, these anti large armor piercing halberds, elite foot squires, should be able to do some noticeable damage to the heavily armored Dragon Ogre Shagoth, but they are way too slow and the Dragon Ogres can simply push through the blobs and move on to another engagement. While over here, Bellacor being surrounded by all these anti-large units decided to dump a Pit of Shades into the fight. A very wise decision as the anti-large attacks combined with the Peasant Bowman's firepower has done substantial damage to Bellacor's HP bar. Also, the Shagoth will be routing the Peasants. Foot Squires attempting to support this engagement would not be able to catch these two single entity monsters and they will be quickly extracting themselves. 
Well, in the front over here, some men at arms with pole arms are surrounding the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. King Luan Lianke trying to catch up with the big monstrosity, but he is only a foot lord right now and can easily be pummeled away just like that, flying quite a bit of a distance. You think normal humans would be dead, but he is the king of Bretonia and he will stand up and fight again. At the back, the Marauder Horsemen are kiting away at the um, Knights of the Realm and the uh, Foot Squires. They will be unable to catch up with the Swift and Agile Light Skirmishing Cavalry while taking quite a bit of Javelin fire in the process. Javelins not primarily armor-piercing, but they still have some pretty decent weapon damage values. At 7 armor piercing per shot, they will do some noticeable damage to even heavy cavalry, like the Knights of the Realm. Now let us go into fast forward as the engagements are calming down for now and there are maneuvers all over the map. Dragon Ogre Shagoths are running away, trying to avoid all the Bretonian peasant infantry. And then there are the Marauder Horses, doing what they do best, kiting, running away from all kinds of melee units while using all their missiles as much as possible and doing all the damage before they need to charge into the melee combat. Mr. Teufel screening away the missiles, using those men at arms with pole arms, a rather cheap infantry to eat all the javelins before sending out the foot squires to take the damage. A pretty decent move since the foot squires are substantially more expensive after all the gold chevrons. Now with the pole arm men at arms routed, the spear men at arms took their place to drive away the chaos skirmishing cavalry. And then there's also a regrouped peasant bowman routing away some marauder horsemen as their firepower is really effective against the lightly armored chaos cavalry. The chaos horsemen then retreated into the trees hoping to avoid engagement and use the terrain to shelter them as this was on ranked Q so no rules of engagement applies. However, with the um, peasant bows, they were able to push off the horsemen and force the um, double dragon ogre shagoths and Bellico to drop in, hoping to eliminate the um, peasant bows of Bretonia, and indeed they succeeded. But that also opens them up to a heavy blob of Bretonian infantry, even King Luan Lianke is in the engagement. Bellico responded with a really great pit of shades here, covering many units, but Mr. Teufel successfully pulled out some of the units before, uh, well, pushing them in once again. Not exactly the greatest move here, but considering most of that spell has gone off, the duration is not enough to do substantial damage to the Beast Slayers at least. Though the Shagoths are using their mass to their advantage and push their way out of the blobs. And then there is another, the second Pharaoh Manticore summon, jumping onto Belakor, hoping to do some minor damage to him as he does not have the greatest armor. But unfortunately, the Dragon Ogre Shagoths are closely following, blocking the Manticores from Belakor. Belakor was able to extract himself from battle. It is probably better to just have the Manticore pin down one of the Dragon Ogre Shagoths while the rest of the Bretonian army chases. With the routing peasants isolated, the Chaos Monsters easily shatters them with a single charge. And unfortunately, the Feral Manticore does not have any support here, being triple teamed by a combination of single entity monsters, taking on so many ancient beings of chaos might just be too much for this meager Feral beast. While the Bretonian infantry will be quickly dispersing as there is a very, very nicely placed pit of shades covering multiple units at once, but it seems that it is mostly just covering a couple of foot squires, nothing too substantial, especially when most of the balance of power on the Bretonian side is held up by King Luan Lianke and also the Damsel of Beast. Now let us do another fast forward as the Chaos single entities are avoiding engagement. On the other hand, Mr. Teufel setting up his infantry box once again, preparing for a charge from all the Chaos units. The Chaos player tried to poke the box with some horses in an attempt to test out the waters, find a weakness in this formation, but alas, their effort was to no avail. Finally, some of the horses are committed to the fight, charging into the fray, hoping to route off some of the foot squires who are heavily damaged, but indeed they themselves have been routed first. With all the um, Bretonian infantry converging onto the mobility, all these marauder horses are gone and the um, Dragon Ogre Shagoths needs to get into combat. We'll do a bit fast forward here with the Chaos player contemplated their next steps. Now the Bretonians move up and the Chaos decide to take the fight. Dragon Ogre Shagov jumping into combat hoping to destroy the foot squires with their charge attack especially. But unfortunately, a nice debuff from the Damsel of Beast. 
the Curse of Onra Air covering all three units, lowering their melee defense attack and also speed. And on top of that, Sword of Corona is activated, lowering the Dragon Ogre Shack of melee defense to a zero giving the peasants, especially the ones with armor piercing, a substantial advantage as their hits now hit a lot more consistently, and thus the Shagoths are shredded by all the peasants. Belakor also surrounded by a lot of units right now, hoping to destroy King Luan Lian Ke. However, King Luan is still quite healthy while Belakor is running low on HP without any support from the Shagovs and he himself surrounded by peasants. The Shadow Prince will make one last desperate attempt dropping a pit of shades hoping to eliminate as many peasants as possible, but alas, it is too little too late. Army losses has been triggered, and Bellacor will be fading into the Immaterium once again. Big thanks to Mr. Teufel for sending in this replay, a very interesting unit composition. If this was facing off against a heavier Warriors of Chaos build, say a bunch of heavily armored Chosens and whatnot, then the Foot Squires combined with the double melee defense debuff, King Luan's Sword of Koron, as well as the Curse of Onra Air, then perhaps the Foot Squires will be able to do some very effective damage even against the expensive Chaos Elites. But today, against only Chaff mostly and some of the Dragon Ogre Shagovs, the Foot Squires were not able to earn too much value from the engagement. They did manage to get a lot of kills, but being obliterated by Bellacor with multiple pit of shades, their damage value is rather limited, but not for the Beast Slayers of Baston because they are specialized in killing large monsters with their anti large armor piercing. The Dragon Ogre Shagoths, especially in the late stages of the game, suffered massive HP losses at the hands of the Beast Slayers. Now for the Knights of the Realm, they did manage to surround the monsters of Warriors of Chaos, but one of them being destroyed by a Pit of Shades, and the other fighting Dragon Ogre Shagoths who does have a lot of armor to mitigate their damage, and on top of that being kited away by Marauder Horsemen. Yes, they did manage to get quite a bit of kills, but in the end, not exactly able to recover their own cost. For the Peasant Bowmen, as usual, they are a very solid unit. Unless they are destroyed by something early, say Pit of Shades, they will be able to recover their own value simply because of how cost effective they are. And especially, Bellacor himself does not have a lot of armor to mitigate all their firepower. Men at arms with pole arms, one of them earned back their value, the other not so much, and the Grail Reliquai. Actually, something I did not mention in the game, consistently providing immune to psychology to all these foot squires and peasant spears and pole arms, keeping them in the fight and preventing them from terrified by the Dragon Ogre Shagoths and Bellic Horse dive bombing. It might not be able to do any damage to your opponents, but it is absolutely a key piece in the Bretonian army right now, especially now that it is at 300 gold, cheaper than ever before. As for the leadership, King Luan did some okay damage, not amazing, since he does not exactly have the speed and armor piercing to do damage to the Chaos Goon squad. As for the Damso, got some Manticore summons off, but the most important contribution is actually from the Curses of Onra Air. As for the Chaos Army, Bellacor always a solid Lord choice, getting almost 600 kills with all those Pit of Shades. Combined with his item that gives him extra damage and attack according to his kill count, he can fight blobs, he can fight single entities, he can fight everything. The only downside is that he doesn't have the greatest armor so he can be quite susceptible to a bunch of missile fire. Dragon Ogre Shagovs, not a lot of good targets in this game. They were mostly stuck on fighting peasants, and they are not exactly the greatest peasant fighters with a rather limited splash attack. Now, Hellstriders did some okay damage on one of them, the other not so much, having to deal with the heavily armored knights of the realm and being surrounded by peasants. Marauder Horses did some decent damage, nothing too amazing here. As for the Marauder Infantry, they actually got beaten up quite badly by the Foot Squires due to all the substantial stat increase thanks to all the chevrons. But yeah, most of this Warriors of Chaos army is held up by Bellacor himself, simply because he is that strong. Anyways, that's it for today's battle, I hope you enjoy it and if you do and want to see more, remember to hit the like and subscribe to get notified every time I upload new videos. And if you want to showcase your own replays, feel free to drop by my discord or send me an email with the replay file attached, I'll be sure to check them out. And yeah, that's it for today's video, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Itch, signing out.